All right, hey, Mr. B, we're back. Hey, let's do this. We're talking about surface landforms of volcanoes and then intrusive landforms of volcanoes. Yes, yeah, so we too. got a lot of stuff to talk about <clears throat> in this video. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so the first part we're talking about is a flood basalt. Yeah. Okay. So a flood basalt um, is a type of volcanic feature that doesn't happen necessarily near a plate boundary. Okay? Yeah. So that's kind of like a hot spot, right? Yeah, kind of like a hot spot, but it's coming from so deep and it's such a high temperature uh -huh. and it's such a low viscosity that this plume that just comes from the surface, or sorry, comes from inside the earth, uh -huh. starts to rise and rise and rise. It gets to the surface, and when it breaks the crust, sure. it doesn't form a volcano, it just floods out. Yeah, and because when we say something is not very viscous, like we mentioned in the other videos, it's almost like real watery yeah. kind of lava, so it's not really going to be explosive or anything like that that we associate with andesitic lava. Mm -hmm. So we can see here this plume just reaches towards the surface. It gets up towards this hot spot and it just floods out. And as the plate starts to move above it, sure. towards the end of it, you end up getting almost like a tail, or they call it a trail of yeah. volcanoes. So you get a couple volcanoes that start to poke up at the end there. Yeah. Um, and you can see in this next picture. We've that, got evidence of uh, flood basalts actually all over the world. Mm -hmm. So we've got the Columbia River basalt here in uh, mm -hmm. the west coast of America. You've got the Deccan Traps, one of the more popular ones. Sure, the Siberian Traps as well mm -hmm. in and, northern Russia. And you can see in the picture here, this is it. I mean, you've basically got this big flowing outpouring of basalt that's on a surface where you just wouldn't expect basalt to Yeah, be. exactly. So, like we say here, a couple uh, hundreds of miles thick, or sorry, long. Yeah, uh, miles, miles thick. thick. And uh, you can have different layers, and there would be different flows from the mantle sure. plume. All right, so uh, we're taking a look at a <coughs> caldera formation. So as we can see there in these pictures, we can see kind of the breakdown and the evolution of creating the caldera. And uh, down in the center, that's highlighted in red, that's the magma chamber. Right there, go ahead and point to it. Mm -hmm. Right, and then we have the the pipe that's actually going from the magma chamber up towards the top. So we have some kind of volcanic eruption, some kind of a volcanic uh, event that that where a lot of that magma is then ejected out of the volcano. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, pyroclastic flow, ash, lava flows, etc. It all comes out, and with that now void space underneath, right, that was once occupied by the magma isn't there anymore. So we get a lot of that material that was above the magma chamber actually falls back into that void space. Yeah, so you're saying like basically we empty the magma chamber almost exactly. and then it just, the roof caves in. Pretty much. Okay, and you can actually see here too at the last stage is that caldera fills with water. It makes yeah. a lake in the middle of the volcano. And uh, we actually have one of these uh, cinder cones that starts forming in the middle. They call it Wizard Island in this case. Yeah, that's uh, Crater Lake. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so some other activity that we see is called intrusive igneous activity. Yeah. It's just volcanic activity that happens underground. Uh -huh. And we've got a, there's a lot of definitions here. So I really suggest that uh, you may want to like pause this a couple times just so you can see all the different features that we're going to point out. Okay, so first we've got this tabular shape. We've got a tabletop shaped volume of rock, okay? So like over here with the lacolith, we oh, have yeah. kind of like a tabular shape where it spreads sure. out in between layers of rock. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we've got a massive, so it's just this uh, random volume of rock. So a lot of times with like the batholith or a pluton or a magma chamber, or sorry, magma chamber is part of it, um, you get this big massive volume of rock. It yeah. just melts away a lot of the rock material around yeah. it. And then we have some like a little bit smaller intrusions. Uh, we can see the sill over here, which is also cutting across two, or cutting in between two different rock layers, and it's kind of like a long thin layer, mm -hmm. right? And then we have another one called the dike that actually cuts across layers, mm -hmm. right? And um, and it's... Yeah. yeah, and if you compare it to what it used to be in the volcano, so like here's your volcanic uh, mm -hmm. pipe, and essentially once it freezes or once it solidifies, uh, you end up creating basically a dike <coughs> if it's cutting yeah. across, and if it's going uh, kind of parallel with the layers, you get sure. a sill that forms out of exactly. it. So these are all just like remnants of an old volcano underground. Yeah. And a lot of times over over time, like through uplifting and things like that, like these features can then be exposed at the surface. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these that we can see. Yeah, so like over here we have Half Dome, mm -hmm. which is in Yos Yosemite Valley, um, and it's a big batholith. And batholith, you can see in the picture here, it was just yeah. like the magma chamber that solidified. Exactly. And it was then 
uplifted a little bit and then the surrounding material was uh, eroded away and weathered and we're left with what that magma chamber used to look like. Okay, and here we've got the Trans-Antarctic Mountains, and it's a sill, so we've yeah. just got that volcanic conduit mm -hmm. that was going sideways at that point. Exactly, and that's right, and we can see that sideways, that volcanic, that intrusion right there going sideways in between. Mm -hmm. And then the last one, we've got one that's uh, cutting across layers, so this is shiprock, uh -huh. and it's a dike. It's cutting across the layers, so it looks like right here we might have like the volcanic neck, yep. and then this one's cutting across different layers. Exactly. Okay. All right, so we do have some more here to show you, some more examples, and we have uh, Devil's Tower, and uh, they actually don't know really what that <laughs> is. They thought they thought they knew what it was, but then there's new evidence that's suggesting that uh, that it may not be a volcanic neck. That's what they originally thought, but uh, but scientists are working on that, and and we'll keep you updated if we find something out. We'll make a new video once it happens. Exactly. Okay, another one's a butte, where basically it's remnant of a volcanic flow. That's taller than the rest of the landscape. Yeah. So uh, through differential weathering, everything else has been weathered away, and you get this tall, almost table-like structure. Sure. And then we've got shiprock there. In the last slide, we had a, like kind of a far away a picture of it, but this is a close-up of it, which is a former volcanic neck. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of appears out of the middle of the landscape. You can see sure. it in the middle of this picture up top here. There's not much around it, and then no. you've just got this big volcanic structure. Exactly. And then also keep in mind that all of these are all igneous rocks. So mm -hmm. when we say that they're igneous intrusions, like that's what they are. You're expecting to find different types of igneous rock there. Mm -hmm. So here's some examples of where we've got some past and current volcanic activity. So like one of the cool spots to go to is Yellowstone sure. um, because there's remnants of a volcano and actually a current volcano there. Yeah, and we get different things like hot springs, and we have geysers. The most famous geyser in uh, in Yellowstone is Old Faithful. It erupts like I think at every forty seven minutes yeah. when I was out there last. Um, but uh, but that's current volcanic activity actually ongoing. It's a hot spot, middle of the North American plate, and uh, as we did in our activity back in plate tectonics, we saw how it actually created that Snake River Valley. Yeah, and that magma chamber is actually heating up a lot of the water that's underground and uh, basically starting to force it through this opening, through the geyser. Exactly. And then uh, if we look at this picture below, and this is pretty commonplace out in Hawaii, our, our lava flows. Mm -hmm. right? We have that not very viscous lava that comes out of the volcanoes in Hawaii, and it, it constantly flows. We can see that this road right here was probably not that old, mm -hmm. and I'm sure there's, there's plenty of pictures that you can find on YouTube where, where roads are just closed and they're rebuilt because the lava flow had come and, and really overtaken it. Mm -hmm. So pretty clear sign that there was a volcano going exactly. on there. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. All right, all right. That's all we got, Mr. Z. All right. Great. All right. Head back to your class website, take a quiz, and we'll see you guys in class tomorrow. All right. Sounds good.